a guy who Marcus we just haven't seen much of. It's it's um he's a mystery box for us. His name is Caleb Marchbank. He wears number twenty two. Um, he's come over from GWS quite a few years ago now. The body has just not been good to him. It's hard to put expectations on him. It's hard to know where he's at. He seems to always be in the rehab group. Um, where are you placed with Caleb Marchbank this year? Yeah, he's just another one where it's just he's just a bit like Charlie Kerno. Just you just don't know when they're gonna when they're gonna come back. There's just no there's just no expectation on him on on you know you can't say oh he's gonna be back by this turn because then something else pops up. His body's just failing him. So it, it is very frustrating because we all know he's he's a great talent and he can be a very good player. Um, his intercept, intercept markings very good and um, even his kicking scores are great too. So. It's really hard. You just don't know. You, know, you see him, he, he was out there training for a bit and then he gets injured again, gets back to training, gets injured again. It's just, it's just, yeah, it's ongoing with him. So it, it's super frustrating and um, you know, I'd love to see him back. I think he's, I think he can be a very good player when, when up and running. Yeah. But also for him, for his, for his health, for his head, for his mental health. Yeah. I mean, he's a fit bloke. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's an elite athlete. That's what he is. That's he's good enough to play in this league at a high level. Um, and to have injuries stop you from just moving and functioning normally and like getting up in the morning and walking to the fridge and opening the fridge and feeling pain. And I just worry about him as a human first, obviously want to see him on the park. Cause I think I personally think he is good enough to be the number two to Jacob Wiedering in terms of the one, two punch. That's how I see him. I think he's yeah. the next in line to take over what Liam Jones does for us personally. Um, but yeah, like 2019, he had the um, the non-displaced fracture in his neck. He was in the neck brace for five months, six months, maybe, maybe, maybe a little less. Um, but it was significant. Then obviously last year, he just kept having complications. Um, he kept having the, um, I think he had the hamstring. Um, as far as information this year, I remember the injury report that Andrew Russell did about three, four weeks ago now, where he said that Marchbank was probably two to three weeks away from joining the main group. So I'm, I'm hoping we can get a, an update when we're doing this preview now on the, the 17th of, of Feb. So we're, we're, I'm hoping that we can get more of an update on where he's at and if he's had any other complications. But I, from what I was hearing and what the club were putting out, it seemed like he was fit and, and you know, finally on top of it. So um, when he does get fit, because I'm going to assume he's going to get fit, he's going to figure it out. He's got Andrew Russell there who's guiding him every step of the way. Um, and he, he must be motivated to get back out there. Where where is he where is he fitting into this team? Because it's a it's a fascinating discussion. Yeah, absolutely. That, that I was just thinking that like, who who do you take out for him? You, you probably look at Plowman as the the obvious one, but then you then you lose that that player that can play on the small. So it's a it's man, it's a great problem to have. Maybe just yeah, you give him a few runs in the reserves while he gets his match fitness back and he's and he makes sure he, his body is right and see what happens from there. But yeah, in terms of taking it, it's a great question and. I'm glad. I'm glad that we can't think of who to take out because it's probably a problem that we haven't had over the last few years. So, um, but yeah, going back to when he, when he just before he hurt his neck, he he was playing some great footy in 2019 um, off that back line, and his marking ability was was awesome. So um, yeah, so we all know we all know he's, he's talented, and I'm sure he'll make us a better a better side when he does play. But yeah, just <laughs> you just don't know who to take out in that in I that back him. six. Yeah, I look at him as a guy that can give you 18 and 10. Um, 18 yeah. touches and, and 10 marks. He's an intercept player yeah. as well. Um, me personally, I think he is the Liam Jones replacement for the future. Yeah. Um, but having said that, I mean, for me, I mean, I just want to see him have like two months of footy uninterrupted, even if it's in the VFL. Um, I think two months of footy in the VFL is going to be he, I don't. I don't see him playing two months of footy in the VFL because he's too good. I think yeah. if he plays five, six games in the VFL, that might be enough to say, okay, he's ready to play in the AFL. So yeah, I think that's the conversation we're gonna we're gonna be revisiting it. I can I can see it already. Once he's fit and healthy, it's gonna be who comes out because Williamson has now emerged. He's now yeah. emerging into this group. He's fit and healthy. Um, we've brought in Newman a few years ago. He's not going anywhere. He's gonna get fit as well. Saad has to play. Um, Wiedering goes without saying. Doc goes without saying. Um, yeah. Jones, he, you know, so you're right. Great uh, problems to have. Um, and I think just more than anything, just want to wish him the best and just send him 
hopefully some good luck and hopefully we can get him back because he's one of he, it's it's really it's him and Charlie who have just been you know crawled with injury. Yeah, hundred percent. It's you, you got it. Yeah, your heart goes out to out to these guys. You know they're still very young and in their footy career as well. So um, yeah, I mean as you said before, great problem to have, but. Um, yeah, let's, let's hopefully just get him back. And I mean, if you can play five to six games consistently in the reserves, I think that, that that's good enough to be um, for him to be ready, I reckon. Yep, fair enough. Some of the fan comments here, Pommy says that March Bank is like Taylor Swift's back catalogue. It was amazing at the time, but now just a memory and no making coin for the owner. Need to get fit, can be top 10 in the league. He's the modern day backman. If ever there was a Pom quote, there it is right there. <laughs> A bit of everything. I love it. <laughs> Alexander says that he thought that he was in, in he was in the best team replacing Plowman at one stage. Now I'm not too sure with injuries. May come in if one of our keys are out of form. Uh, fair enough. Uh, Clinton says, with our back line, it'll be horses for courses. Sean Taylor says, Marchie can't replace Liam Jones. Modern full forwards are 200 plus, 200 centimetres plus, and he would get monstered. That's a good point. That's actually a very good point. I uh, didn't think of it like that, but you're right, Sean. Um, Stephen says a fully fit Caleb would likely take Plowman's position. He can play tall and short and I think more creative than Plow. Um, interesting. And Clinton says no need for SPS to be in the back line. I didn't even mention Sam Petrescu, yeah. but yes, yeah, he's, it's, it's been made very clear, uh, that he's going to be playing there. So Mr. Whittle says March bank will be scary when he returns. So I think we all still know how good he is. I think the fans can still remember how good he can be. Like we say, it's just about getting him back out there and fingers crossed, toes crossed, and um, hopefully we could see him out there this year. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, There's no real expectations at this stage for him. It's just just getting his body right, and we'll, we'll take it from there. Yeah, beautiful. So there's Caleb Marchbank for season 2021. <laughs>